Uh, there are many, so I cannot cover all of them. But uh, I think uh, for me, uh, the biggest question right now as far as uh, subsets of AML is P50 mutated AML. Because as I mentioned, they are very difficult to treat. Uh, they usually do not respond to chemotherapy. They do not respond to venetoclax. Uh, if they get any type of response, they would relapse within a few months. So the survival is very short. So the only way is to cure them potentially is to get them to the allergenic stem cell transplantation. But we know that the transplant only works after we get some sort of uh, tumor reduction. So um, that's why we're looking for ways to get rid of the bulk of the leukemia as much as we can so that the patients can undergo stem cell transplantation and potentially be cured. So that's one biggest thing. I think the other one is uh, um, we're discussing a lot the role of maintenance in acute myeloid leukemia because by now we've figured out that this is such a difficult disease to cure, even with the stem cell transplantation, that perhaps we need to continue treatments even after the stem cell transplantation, at least for the high-risk subsets. Um, so far, there's only one drug that is approved for maintenance in patients who actually cannot undergo stem cell transplantation is oral azacitidine. Uh, but there are a lot of clinical trials ongoing exploring different types of maintenance uh, uh, without stem cell transplantation or after stem cell transplantation. I think that's sort of a, a next uh, big thing that we are trying to sort out. And then finally, uh, we are, as a field, trying to figure out what is the role and meaning of what we call measurable residual disease. There was a session yesterday, a very nice session, uh, which essentially measures with the different uh, techniques, most commonly used as flow cytometry, residual leukemia cells. And uh, so this is very highly prognostic in uh, most of the studies looking at intensive chemotherapy or non-intensive chemotherapy. And then uh, the, we know that these patients don't do well even with the stem cell transplantation. But if we continue treating them with what we have been treating them, then for sure the disease comes back. So the goal is to get rid of this uh, minimal zero disease which in theory should be easier because you don't have like a bulk of leukemia, so you have only a little bit of leukemia left, but the question is like how, right? And what is the nature of the cells? Are they the same depending on the genotype? Are they the same depending on the therapy that patients receive? So there's a lot of like approach, especially like immune-driven uh, approaches such as with antibody drug conjugates or NK cells or uh, T cell engagers and K cell engagers. So a lot of like different things, uh, venetoclax is being tried to get rid of this minimal residual disease cells, which we think is the cause of a disease coming back. I think this is like a third biggest challenge right now in the field.